Hi, class, third graders. I am Mrs. Parsons, and I am your book lager this month. For some reason, we are not able to be in person together, so this video will give you an idea about some of the books that will be, or all of the books that will be in your backpack that will be delivered to you. Um, the first book I have is called El Perro Con Sombrero, and it says it's a bilingual doggy tail. And I look at the word bilingual, there's two parts to that book. The first by, think about it. Does anybody know what by means? I'm thinking of like a bicycle has two wheels. By means two. So two and then lingual sounds like language, two languages. This book is in both Spanish and English. And it doesn't matter if you know both. You, If you read English, you can read it in English. If you read Spanish, you can read it in Spanish. I know some kids have taken it home and if they have family members that read Spanish, they, their family members have been able to read it to them. And what it does is the English is in black and the Spanish is in red. It's the same thing. So I'll start you out with this one so you get an idea what it's about. Pepe was a very sad dog. He had no home and no family to love him. One day, Pepe was begging for food on the street when a sombrero flew up a balcony and landed right on his head. He looked so handsome in the sombrero, a grocer gave Pepe a juicy bone. Yum. Then a movie director drove up in an expensive car. He shouted, cool, a bro in a sombrero. You must be in my movies. Pepe became the star of many great films. He played a cowboy dog. He played a romantic singer. In a comedy, he even ate a habanero pepper. He made a lot of money. But he was still sad because he didn't have a family. Lying in his dog mansion, Pepe had no one to pet him and hug him. Only his adoring fans gave him comfort. But someone did not like Pepe, El Gato in Zapatos. So there's a couple problems in this book we found. One problem I think is gonna be the cat, and the other is that he doesn't have a family. So I hope you wanna read this book so you can figure out um, it, how those problems are solved. The next book I have is for all of you who like reptiles. This is a nonfiction book. Um, generally, when you read a fiction book, well, always when you read a fiction book, and generally when you read a nonfiction book, you start at the beginning and you keep reading till the end. This book, you don't have to do that because each page spread is about something different, but it's all about reptiles. So, when I read this book last night, this is how I read it the first time. I look at the title. you know that picture reading is part of reading and I noticed that it, there's a thing called wrap up on warm up on every page when you do the warm up like this one says what's a snake's favorite subject in school history did you know do you know any other snake jokes so they're giving you something to start thinking about lots of did you knows so the first time I read it I did it like this I wasn't reading many words, but I was finding out and getting my brain going about what the book was all about. And then the second time I went, I started at the beginning and I went to the table of contents. And I'm going to read parts of that to you. First, there's an introduction. Then there's um, page, a couple of pages about what is a reptile. They aren't cute and cuddly, and that's exactly why we love them. Get the info in our cold-blooded friends in this article. Um, so there's all different little articles and you can read the table of contents and figure out are they all interesting to you or is part of it interesting to you. I'm going to start out and we're going right to the middle of the book. There was a page called Did You Know? And I'm going to read just a few of the Did You Knows to, um, to you. A chameleon has a sticky tongue that is up to one and a half times as long as its body. It uses it to capture an insect and zip it into its mouth within one-tenth of a second. How 
much more than crabs. Then there's a part about crocodiles. When crocodiles get hot, they rest it with their mouths wide open. Sometimes birds will come and pick leftover food from between their teeth. Ugh. And then another one about alligators. In the wild, alligators usually run away from other animals. And about 120 million years ago, crocodiles were 40 feet long and they ate dinosaurs. So you can read the book like that, like what I just skipped around, put the parts that were interesting, or you can read it starting from the beginning all the way to the end, all about reptiles. I have another nonfiction book for you called Hidden Figures. And this is a history fiction book, non nonfiction book, sorry. And it is about four women um, who were computers. And I'll tell you a little bit about what, a, what the word computer used to mean. And it says a true story of four black women and the space race. So if you like history, if you like stuff about NASA, if you like stuff about um, astronauts, um, this is a little backstory. Starts out with Dorothy Vaughn, Mary Jackson, Katherine Johnson, and Christine Darden were good at math. Really good. They were like geniuses in math. And then it starts out and it gives a little bit about each person, each of those four people. It talks about, this is their time of history. Because Dorothy was black and a woman, some people thought it would be impossible for her to get a job as a computer. A computer is a person who does lots of math. Now, our computers now do the math for us, but someone has to program it so it can do that. They did the job of all of the math because they didn't have the kind of computers we do now. Dorothy lived in Virginia, a southern state where laws segregated or kept apart black people from white people. They could not eat in the same restaurants. They could not drink at the same water fountains. They could not use the same restrooms. They could not attend the same schools. They could not play in the same sports team. They could not sit near each other in movie theaters. They could not marry someone from a different race. So that was what the times were like when she lived. But she was a genius in math. And um, so this book tells about how the four of them helped with their genius math skills get um, things into outer space. Towards the end it says, the next adventures wouldn't be easy and would require lots of tests and more numbers. But Dorothy, Mary, Catherine, and Christine knew one thing. With hard work, preservation, and a love of math, anything was possible. So they were four people that helped with um, early rockets going out into space. So that's Hidden Figures. The next book I have is a graphic novel, and I um, was looking for something new, and a friend of mine teaches in Rockford, and there was a group of boys who decided to have a reading club, and they went through these books. There are several in the series called Press Start. This one is Game Over Super Rabbit Boy, and I'll read you, I'll get you started on it. Chapter one is called Press Start. Super, super Rabbit Boy Land, Press Start. This is Animal Town. It's a peaceful town full of happy animal friends. The townspeople have fun all the time. They play games, they dance, they have a party every day. This is Singing Dog. He lives in Animal Town. He loves happiness, he loves fun, and he loves to make other people happy. Everyone is, has fun with Singing Dog. Singing Dog really knows how to be happy. This is King Viking. He lives in Boom Boom Factory, high up in, on Mount Boom. He does not like happiness. He does not like fun. And he really does not like other people who are happy and fun. Not one bit. King Viking can't stand the fun going on in Animal Town. He has never danced. He has never played games. He has only ever been mean. So he has come up with a no fun plan. 
So the book is about the no fun plan and how they get around his plan. So that's press start. And I have another graphic novel for you. There's two graphic novels in their backpack this month. This is called The Great Pet Escape. And the three main characters are right here. There's a rabbit, there's a guinea pig, and a hamster. If you can look here, they don't look happy. They used to be out in the fields and all of that, and they somehow landed as class pets in a school. And they um, started to like it, some of them started to like it, but GW, which stands for George Washington, did not like it, and he decided they were going to escape. And along the way of escaping, they met, there is Harriet, she's the fourth grade um, class pet, she's a mouse, and Lucinda is the fifth grade class pet, she's a snake. And the longtime friends want to escape, so he builds an escape matic and there's a picture of the escape matic Some of the second graders give him different um, items from the classroom, and he goes and hides them, and so they think it's funny that he hides everything. Well, what they did, the second graders didn't know that it was that he was hiding them, but actually he was making an escape matic And I'm going to do some, I'm going to read a little bit in the middle of the book. So they're out, they're all out of their cages at night and um, they figured out how to do that. And this is what Harriet wants to do, the fourth grade mouse. Picture this, all those little rats in the school will come to the cafeteria tomorrow to enjoy a healthy, tasty lunch and whammo lunchtime surprise. Tonight, my minion friends and I will prepare the most vile, disgusting lunch they've ever seen. Tuna noodle casserole with chocolate chips and pickles liver chunklets in alfredo sauce with mayonnaise and orange juice, chocolate broccoli milk for dessert jello. No, why would anyone do something that terrible? Because I'm Harriet. I create mischief and mayhem wherever I go. Well, these three decided that they had to stop her. And in the process of stopping her, there was a food fight in the cafeteria at night. So I hope you enjoy this book. Read to find out what happened after the food fight um, and all the details that come before it. I have one more book. Um, this is Stella Diaz Has Something to Say. And this is a brand new book um, to me. And when I started reading it, I thought, yeah, I'll read another, another book tonight. I had to read the whole thing because I really liked it right away. Um, some things to know about Stella. She lives with her mom and her big brother, Nick. She's shy. She has a speech problem with how she says words and so has to go to speech class. Um, there's one girl in her class that makes fun of her for that. Sometimes she gets mixed up with her Spanish words and her English words and the, uh, that person in her class makes fun of her for that. And she was born in Mexico and immigrated to um, the United States, and it takes place in Chicago. She immigrated when she was little, so she doesn't really remember Mexico very much. Um, she loves, loves, loves fish. And one of the things that her teacher has given the class a long, a long term project where they have to, they have to pick the topic, she picked fish and they have to um, write a report on it, and then they have to give a presentation about it. Well, you know she's shy, and so the presentation was a really big deal um, for her. It made her um, kind of nervous about it. So this book is about friends, old friends and new friends. It's also a little bit about bullies and how she conquered um, the person who was being a bully in a very nice way. So this is Stella Diaz has something to say. So those are our six books that will be in the um, backpack that will be delivered to your classroom. I hope you enjoy them, and you'll get another backpack next month. Thank you very much.